Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And today we are looking at a new code editor. This is Cursor's A Visual Studio alternative, although that's not really accurate because this is actually a fork of Visual Studio. So it's more of a co-pilot plus Visual Studio code alternative. And that one is because this is basically Visual Studio, a fork of it, and Copilot, but designed all integrated. So instead of being an extension, this thing is built entirely around the idea of AI coding assistance. So if you're all in on the AI pairs programming concept, uh, this one just more tightly integrates it. And I got to admit, it's nicer to work with than Copilot by quite a margin, to be honest. I don't like working with Copilot. I like the results of Copilot. I just don't like the interface. So the entire idea behind Cursor is basically they've made a version of Visual Studio entirely premised around the idea of working with a Copilot like solution which they are actually calling Copilot++, which I I don't know. I'm not a trademark lawyer, but I wouldn't have gone with that name. So anyways, here we are inside of it. Now, I mentioned earlier on, this is a fork of Visual Studio. So you may be wondering, okay, how much of a fork? How long out of date we are? Well, this is based off of Visual Studio Code 1.86.2. That is a patch of the February release, I believe. Uh, and right now, the March release was just brought out in early April as I record this. So it is one release behind in terms of uh, timing. So you are definitely going to sacrifice a little bit on that side. Although you'll notice, other than the fact that the UI has been updated a bit, uh, full extensions are available. So if you want to install, say, a C Sharp extension, it's there. You want to bring in Python or whatever else, uh, all the extensions are there. And let's say if you're doing Godot, all of the marketplace extensions are there. So it, it's standard Visual Studio code, no problems there. Uh, but otherwise, this is all about AI. And so if you're in the AI ecosystem, you're all about that. Well, what you've got is a couple options, and they're all built around two hotkeys, Control K uh, and Control L. So L is your command chat on the side. So let's say I've got this code over here, and then I hit Control L, and we'll bring up the tab over here. By the way, you can also do this with buttons right there. So anytime, you can bring that one up, and you can say, what does this code do? And it goes ahead and explains it. Now, this is working off a free version. It gives me a certain number of requests per month. I'll get to the, the cost and the breakdown and all that. There's also alternatives where you can provide your own API keys and not pay them anything. So if you're using, um, say, ChatGPT, OpenAI through the API key, you can switch to this from Visual Studio Code and have nice, tighter integration and not pay anything. So here's a chat breakdown of what this code did. Obviously, it is you can follow it up and say, OK, specific questions about the answer it just gave, and you can choose the the model that you wish to work with. Again, uh, at the free tier, you have a very limited number of GPT-4 requests, so you may want to use GPT-3.5. Results aren't as current, uh, but there's other neat things you can actually do here with your chat, and that is these at mentions. So you can actually tell the chat how to work with. So I could say, all right, now look at this documentation. Let's say I was working with React. So I can say, okay, look at the React documentation, and I can specifically drill down to which aspect of the documentation. So I can sort of say, use this as part of your answer. But you can also do it, so instead of uh, the that at, you can also point it at a particular folder, uh, Git code base, and so on, or the entire code base itself. Or you can actually have it, so at by default, it's not actually searching the web. So now this will actually do a web search as part of this request as well kind of a neat integration there. There's also some cool controls you can do on top of that, part of their settings over here. Um, first off, when you install it, you can say privacy mode, but this is kind of neat. So you can tell the AI some rules. So if you're working in a certain domain and it keeps giving you answers about a different domain, you can actually do something like this. Always use functional Rust, never use unwrap in Rust, always output your answers in Portuguese. Uh, and then boom, that will run for all requests that ever happens. So you don't have to specify the same requests over and over and over again, which is kind of neat. The other cool part is you can actually turn on uh, various different models. So different model options that are out there. Um, so you can figure the latest open AI models or open router models, enable them over here. Also, as I mentioned earlier on, if you have an open API key, uh, you can specify it here and not pay them anything. Same with Anthropic. And then on top of that, if you have, uh, you can host your own model on uh, Azure and send in a product key pointed at your Azure install and work with it that way as well. You do have control over uh, other settings available here as well. And you can also tell it, for example, to always chat, always use the web as part of its chat. And then you've got a couple of other betas, beta features that are available here as well. Uh, but some really neat functionality, for, especially for controlling exactly how that chat is going to happen. And again, if you are tightly using a, the, the code on a very regular basis, uh, that is, is going to be a nice workflow in that regard. So that is the control L chat. You've also got control K, which is your inline code. We're gonna grab the C code and I can pick it all. 
So we're gonna go a little off script. So here, and then you do control K, kind of an inline chat or inline instruction. So if you've got an individual line of code you wanna have something to happen to, you can do it right there. And I can say, translate to C sharp. Now this is not part of their uh, scripted thing of here, but here you can see, goes ahead, runs it line by line. Another big aspect of what uh, is different here with cursor is it's got single tab to complete everything. So one of the things I found with Copilot in general is I just found it, um, I, I don't know, I like um, in my way. It, it tripped over it. I hated doing tap, 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 implement everything. Now, I'm not going to tell you how well this code is actually working. I'm also going to show you it's pretty slow as it's going through and doing the translation. Now, that's me complaining about sci-fi stuff. I should not, th this is magic that this works in the first place. Uh, but this aspect of it is, uh, it is slower because it's using slow chat GPT-4. So if you're paying, you get faster access to chat GPT. I'll get back to that again just in a second when I talk about the pricing. But you get an idea of what this is capable of. Uh, once it's done, it's going to give you um, a uh, prompt by prompt by prompt, uh, do you wish to keep it? Uh, they use their own hotkeys for it. It's like control N for no and control shift Y for yes, which again is also typically pretty nice integration. Not the fastest run you've ever seen, but literally I just asked it to translate from one code to another. And this is using, um, uh, again, a slower model. So here, each chunk or each block, you can go ahead and accept it or not. So control shift Y. Yep. Uh, yep. And so on. So you basically go on through. I, th I think there's a way to do. Uh, yeah. So control enter, I think accepts all. And then boom, you now have C sharp version of what was previously uh, C code, which is pretty cool. And on top of that, one other thing you can do, same thing is down here. Uh, if you've got a terminal and you're working with the file system, uh, you can actually do commands here uh, and specify it for the terminal. Uh, so say list all the files in this directory or something to that effect, uh, and it will do the code for you. In this case, a PowerShell uh, prompt. Uh, so actually try that, list all the files in this directory. So you do have chat integration into the, um, <laughs> so uh, that was probably the most um, abbreviated response you were ever going to get, but hey, it was a correct answer. Uh, but if you had more uh, intensive instruction right there, if you didn't necessarily know how to work with PowerShell or anything, or you uh, more complex, you can spit it off to the chat here. So that is integrated into uh, the terminal as well, which is actually pretty cool. So really kind of a common theme here. The entire idea behind this is that it is a Visual Studio built entirely around AI coding assistance. So uh, if you are working with code assistance, you're probably gonna find that this works better than Copilot um, in terms of just how it's integrated into the product itself. Um, so details about it, a little bit more about what it does. I think I've covered most of the big things there. Uh, privacy mode, they store none of your code on their servers or logs, which is an important thing as well. Uh, your prompts are stored though. Uh, it's one of those things to be aware of. That's an open AI thing. Uh, but if you sign up for the, um, the package, we'll get to the package here as well. So uh, this is their Copilot++, plus plus. big things here. They kind of just switch with the way that autocomplete works. And I do, their autocomplete, just the single tab to add in code, it's a nicer approach than what I find with working with uh, Copilot. So Copilot++ plus plus suggests complete edits. You just have to press tab once and it will all come in. Um, it sees your recent changes, so it knows what you want to do otherwise. Uh, you can type haphazardly and get perfect code, so it turns pseudo codes into proper code as you go. You can fix linting errors in milliseconds, uh, and then a breakdown of why they actually created it and what's different between Copilot and then their implementation of Copilot++, which again, not a trademark lawyer, but that's not the name I would have gone with. Uh, and then now we'll get back to cost. So again, you can use all of this for free. Uh, you're just, in terms of nice, easy integrations, you're down to uh, 50 chat GPT slow responses. That's why it took so long to translate. Uh, if you sign up, you can get up to 500 chat GPT for fast responses. So you're gonna burn through this really fast. So you can switch over to 200, 3.5 uses per month. Uh, and to sign up for this, literally you just log in. Uh, so create an account, log in, or I just use my Gmail so I can get added even more mailing lists. Or you can go to the pro level at $20 a month, which is again, Copilot money. That's Copilot pro money actually. Uh, so it's one of those things to be aware of, but it, that will give you unlimited everything, but only 500 fast chat GPT four uses per month. Uh, and then there's a business level for like administration, centralized billing. So if you're in a corporate environment and so on. Uh, so in, in the future, they are talking about the ability to run their servers self-hosted, uh, which is interesting to see how that will ultimately come about. Uh, so that is the pricing. But do keep in mind, you could stick 100% to the free tier and provide your own ChatGPT key. 
uh, and then use it uh, like completely like normal. So that is one of the major differences uh, with cursor, but this is the pricing breakdown. Uh, again, it is about a month, month and a half behind Visual Studio Code as a fork. And obviously they've they've changed things a little bit as well. So you're gonna have slightly different hotkeys, slightly different controls and commands and so on. Uh, I do like that it's as intuitive as it is, everything. So again, chat, control L, control K for instructions. Uh, control N for no, control shift Y for yes. It's very intuitive set of hotkeys to run through. And then these, these prompts that pop up, they don't get that annoying. They're not that in your way. Uh, and they do sort of walk you through what you need to know. So it's again, all about AI. If you're not into AI coding assistance, cursor is not going to do anything for you. It doesn't do anything super magical beyond Visual Studio Code. So if you don't like Visual Studio Code or the performance of Visual Studio Code, you're not gonna like cursor. But if you're using Visual Studio Code, and specifically you're using it with an AI assistant, it makes a lot of sense to check out cursor because it kind of just, it's more tightly integrated, more polished, more built around the entire premise of working with an AI assistant. So that's cursor. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.